There's a whole area in the Bernina sewing machine where you can set this machine for the way you like it. Right down here is the setup program. When you touch that, we're going to get into areas of sewing, embroidery, calibrating, uh, machine settings such as sound or how it alarms when your thread breaks or your bobbin runs out. So let's just kind of start walking through here. If you have any questions, you can always touch the question mark and touch an area and it will help give you a reference of what that particular icon is. When you see a plus, that means there's more inside here. So as we touch it, we're going to get into, and when you change settings, these are going to happen globally. So right here, this is a whole thing on tension. So over the whole entire machine, if you want it to actually change higher or lower so you don't have to keep changing it from stitch to stitch, you can globally increase or decrease your tension by one or two numbers. If you touch the yellow box, that would return it back to normal. Now each time I want to go back a screen, I'm going to come back one level, and as I touch it, it's like turning your page back. Sometimes they'll call these kind of like breadcrumbs. As you get more breadcrumbs out here and you step backwards, you find where you were and then you can continue on. This next one is actually by its name tie-off stitches. If you don't want it to do the locking stitches at the beginning of the stitch, you can just touch that and it'll turn off that feature. Also too, with the foot control, you're able to control the heel. Now normally when this machine comes, when you rock your heel back on the back of the foot control, it will lower your needle down in the fabric by a half a stitch, or if it's down, it will bring it up a half a stitch. And that's what the first default setting is. But if you would like to change it, the heart would be related to your favorites here. So then that way you can go in and actually change it to do a couple things. If you would prefer it to tie off, you can turn the tie off feature on and then you can choose whether you want it to be all in a cluster or all in a small tiny straight row with four, three, two, or even more stitches up to six. Or would you prefer it to cut the thread when you rocked your heel back? Or maybe you'd prefer it to lift up the presser foot or any combinations of. So when you don't want those, you can just turn that back. The heart takes those off and the needle up down feature is back for the foot control. We'll back out one level. And we'll go over here. This is maximum speed of the machine, a thousand stitches per minute, but if you want to just slow that down, of course, anything that we do in here is going to be kept when your machine is turned off. So that new setting of reduced speed would also be remembered no matter where the speed control is set on the front of the machine. Next, we have, let's see, by its actual name, Program Function and Buttons. There's a lot in here, and when you go in, each one is identified. For example, you can program in what this button does. This is to lift and lower the presser foot by how much, so you can change that to be more or less based on what you need it to be. The next one is the scissors. Whether When you do the, the scissor button or a selective thread cutter there, is you can have it be also locked and with a series of locking stitches in the same kind of cluster or again, uh, slightly forward with small stitches and you pick the amount that you'd want it to be. Going back, the reverse button, depending on how you want it to be. This is a reverse button, but this one is the backup with the decorative stitch option, means it goes in the reversed holes that exactly mimic the stitch that was made. So if it's a decorative stitch and you're doing a little tail of a of an animal, it will actually back up into the animal's tail and go exactly the way you, way you want it. So you choose which backing up feature you would prefer all the time. The pattern end, again, you can have that be with locking stitches. You could also have it so it cuts it and then lifts the foot up at the very end. So again, depending on how you like to sew, you can set that. Needle up and needle down, if you would prefer the need foot to hover when the needle is down. I like it a lot of times on that middle one. This one's really high. I don't usually use that one as much, but I also haven't worked on really high fabrics of late. So that would be better for something much thicker. If you don't want it to lift at all, you just want it to stop with the needle down, set it for the first one, and then you won't have that little kind of hesitation in between each time you stop. And, but it's great for pivoting, great for applique, so again, Sometimes, I, in my last couple of projects, I've had that on and off or between these two features quite a few times because one time I wanted it up and the other time I didn't. So I can just change it at, at whim there. Okay, stepping back, another area here. 
all the way back to the beginning. That's everything that's in that first sewing section. Now the next one's going to be related more to the embroidery area from tension to hoop calibration to whether you want it to, to knot at the beginning of your stitches speed, fabric thickness, and then cutting options. Do you want it to cut between your, your color changes or and then also with the cutting as it is defined here. Actually, it is not defined. Okay, so whether you want to probably um, cut at the end of your design, that is usually what it's set for. All right, going out of embroidery. Next one here is actually our personal setting. So we can go in here. You can actually change the welcome screen to a different color and you can actually type in what you want the sewing machine to say when you turn the machine on. So if you wanna say, let's get sewing, we can just retype that in, touch the green check mark and that will change from welcome to your fun phrase. And we have different colors and different patterns to go along with your style of sewing. I'll leave that the way it is. This one here by its term, moder moder monitoring <laughs> functions. As we go in here, when you have a thread break, this is going to, because it's green and on, it will tell me when the thread, upper thread has broken or also when the bobbin thread is running out or is run out completely. Now, if you ever have a sensor you're sewing along and it's it you're sewing it's not broken but it keeps alarming out i have at times helped customers who are far away to just go ahead and turn that off so it stops alarming out and then you'll be able to continue to sew without any major issues or having it stop after maybe three or four stitches so you can go and turn that off if you're having any major problems but it is nice to just leave it on and voila It'll let you know when things aren't looking good and it can't see your needle thread or your bobbin thread while sewing. The alarm, so or, or more the sound, like right now you're hearing a slight beep while I'm touching the screen. So we can actually change that. We can turn it completely off. So it's much quieter as I touch the screen. I don't get a beep every time I do it. If you want it on, you can have when you pick a decorative stitch, any stitch, four different beeps here. And then also when you pick information uh, functions like moving or sizing or um, do, t turning different things on in the information area, how many beeps that actually goes. And then also if your stitch regulator beeps at you with an audible signal and not just the, the red and green light on the front of the machine. So again, you can choose how you want that to actually be. And if you've got somebody who often is in the room but you don't wanna beep, and let them hear you, go ahead and turn off the noise there. All right, and the last one with the sewing machine setting. So these are things, they're a little bit more global. So as we go in here, first off is language, stepping back. Next one is the lighting. So you can actually adjust how bright the screen is and then how bright the sewing light is. If you have anything reflective or clear vinyls, you don't, and the light is just shining bright at you, you can reduce that down to maybe a lighter light. But again, nice to be able to adjust it on based on where you're sitting, sometimes near a window, you might wanna change it a little bit. Now this next one is a screen calibration. If you're ever touching a function and you seem to be getting the function next to it, sometimes the screen will change uh, slightly and you can recalibrate it on your own. Watch how this is gonna go. When you do it, the screen's gonna go blank. What I must do right now is take my stylus and touch in the middle of each of these little crosshairs and what it's doing is realigning the screen and it makes it, well, perfect. This next one is gonna be more of like resetting all your functions so you can reset like your sewing settings, your embroidery settings, and going through the different ones, uh, just even a reset all. Maybe you've changed some things and you don't know what you've changed, you can actually go in and just kind of reset the whole entire machine. All right, we were in the sewing machine section here and uh, this one is gonna be more for a little bit more of your um, settings like th that are service related. There we go. Uh, first off, this first one says foot. There's a picture of a foot and it says 3A. That's your buttonhole foot. If you need to calibrate your buttonhole foot, we'll walk you through those steps. Actually, if you just go back and touch the question mark, it will walk you through what you're gonna do put the buttonhole foot on, move it forward and backward. What they'll do is if you're having a buttonhole that doesn't come out, you can calibrate the buttonhole and it will reset it and make it a perfect buttonhole. We used to have to take the machine into our service gentlemen and gals to do that for us. Now we can do it right here on our machine with our own buttonhole foot. An update, so this would be if there was an update, usually your Bernina service people will do updates for you. 
uh, that would be where that is taking place. The other thing for uh, set up the cleaning of the thread catcher that's actually done in this area. We have a video completely on actually doing that. And then also your oils lubricating the machine. Now let me show you something on this video as I slide up. There's a, a section of it that I don't want you to oil anymore and this is a new thing from Bernina. So yes, you do oil in those little um, areas there. But right up top, this is no longer a recommended oil place. They did not find that it was actually benefiting anything <laughs> other than just getting some places a little bit more oily than they need. So just those um, two on the front. And then what I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna let this picture go a little further. When you take out your hook here, I want you to go ahead and oil along this outside perimeter. And that, because it rotates and that um, gets metal against metal. So give that a little lubrication as well. So two places in the middle, a little bit around the outside and then avoid the one on the top. All right, and the last one is actually for uh, setting the embroidery module back into a, a park position or so it fits back into the styrofoam. That embroidery unit can actually be uh, moved. And so what I'll do is walk you through how to set that back into a position that fits into the box. Okay, so that's a lot of machine setup areas. Uh, go ahead and refer, your manual actually is great and actually the best way to do it is just have the little question mark help you if you forget what some of those icons are. Remember, anything that you do in the setup area is remembered after you turn the machine off.